This picture right here is a unprocessed picture we coded in auto stretch um, that I took for a video a while back about back focus. So you can see here in this picture here, I specifically put the camera at the wrong back focus and you can see the stars here at the corner, they are quite elongated. And if we go into the center, they are actually quite round. Now, if you have elongated stars in your pictures, I'm gonna show you how we fix that in Zero. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be working with the star processing menu in here. Now, before you start, there's a few things you need to do because you need to go and get the StarNet um, star removal um, plugin up and running. As you can see here, if you just open up to start with, it's not really working um, because you need to actually get StarNet downloaded. You do that by heading over to starnetastro.com and you download the um, the latest version. You get that as a zip file and you unzip that into a folder of your choice. Once you've done that, you go up here in Cyril to the burger menu. We go into preference. From preference, we go to miscellaneous. And in here, you can see that you need to point to a to the standard executable. So click the icon out here and locate wherever you exported all those um, files inside the zip and, and select the starnet plus and put that in here. After that, I recommend that you restart Cyril. And now when we go up to image processing, start processing and open up the Starnet removal, we should see that it has successfully found it was a valid Starnet version two is executable found, blah, 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 blah. Now this would actually be a good point to talk about what it is we're gonna be doing today. So the workflow we're gonna be doing is we're gonna separate the picture here into two, one with just the background being the galaxy. This is of course Andromeda. And then one that's called a star mask, which is just all the stars in a picture. We're then gonna work on the star separately from the background. And then we're gonna combine the two again into one picture at the end. This is actually a very neat thing to do in general in all your pictures, because this allows you to work on just the nebulosity or the galaxy and stretch that without blowing out the stars, which is something you can easily do. So let me show you how you do this. We go up to image processing, star processing, and we click the star net star removal. Now, as I said, I recommend you to do this on a unstretched image, but you select the pre-stretch linear image uh, in here, because again, this allows you to get the unstretched version of both of them out, so you can just stretch them manually separately afterwards. And of course, you also want to, uh, to regenerate or to generate star mask, because that's what we want. As you can see here in the folder we're working with right now, we only have the, um, the stacked fit file. But if we, uh, we click execute here, the Starnet star removal is going to begin and it can take a bit of time. So by the power of video editing, it is done. There you go. Now what you can see that we have here in our folder, we now have one called Starless and we have one called Star Mask. This is the Starless image and we can see we're still on an auto stretch. So if we go back to linear, we could now begin to do a stretch of just the background if uh, we want to do that. But that's not what this video is about. For that, I recommend you watch my video on the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation, which is an earlier lesson in this series. But we are gonna be working on the star mask. So let's go ahead and open up the star mask. So here we have our star mask. It is unstretched. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to stretch it. And again, I'm just gonna apply a very quick stretch here. I'm not gonna to be too aggressive. I think this looks okay, at least for a start. Now we can see the stars in here. They're actually nice and round. They're a little bit blurry, a little bit fussy. Um, simply because the picture was a little bit out of focus. But what we really want to focus on is these elongated stars in here. What we're going to do is we're going to be using here in the image processing, star processing, we are going to be using what's called a full synthesis. What the full synthesis does is it essentially recalculates what the stars were supposed to look like. But first we need to tell the program where the stars are. So we can click the gear icon here right next to the full resynthesis. Now in here, we can now begin to select the individual stars. Now this is obviously, or luckily very, very easy. We just click the little button here with the three stars. And there we go. It has now selected all the stars that it could detect with the default settings we have here. And you can see them relatively round in here in the middle. And we can see those with purples on it means that they has, those have been overexposed. So that means I probably stretch it a little bit too far as we have a few that is overexposed. But notice this down here. What is this? Can you see? All those elongated stars down here have not been selected. Now, why haven't they been selected? Because there is 
a roundness threshold, as you can see here. And that's basically it says if the if they are more um, then have more uh, like if they're more elliptical than this threshold, they're not going to be counted as stars and they're not going to be included. So for us, we need to have all these things included. So we could probably lower this to let's say 25 and click detect. There we go. Look at that. Now it actually caught a lot more stars than it had before, which is great. Now you can of course play around with these and I should probably say here you also have what's called a roundness range so if I say hey you know what I actually don't want to work on the stars that is already perfectly round just keep those as they are so I could maybe let's say I lower this to uh, to 75 and there we go it's done and now we can see all those stars in here in the middle they got removed and we now only have the stars that are left out here in the boundary this really shows that what the problem is this is probably the clearest way you can see that what we're dealing with here is back focus being incorrect because all the elongated stars are out here in the sides and it's actually relatively perfectly round in here in the middle i'm gonna do a full synthesis so we're gonna just put that back to one there actually just remove that roundness threshold you can do the same here with your with your amplitude if you want to say oh i want to reduce the size of how i don't want to work on the on the lightest stars maybe i don't want to work on the fainter star if you don't want to work on like the brighter ones you can set an amplitude range here you can do kind of the same thing as um as you could over here now what you can also do if you want to manually add stars is you can just like click and drag and make a box around the star and then you click control space and then it detects the star there so you can go control space and it detects the star and then in a similar fashion if we say you know what that that's not a star you can just click it and and then you can go over here and you just click the minus icon Similarly, like that. Okay, so you just say, oh, that that there, that doesn't look like a star. Let's remove that. Okay, there you go. Now, we're just going to redetect this. So your first job is to just go around and make sure you get everything selected correctly. Again, you have different profiles down here for how it's going to um, count to detect the stars. You can play around with it. I think the default is Gaussian, and that's probably what's going to be working best for you. But... It, I would recommend to start with Gaussian. You can swap it over to um, to another profile type. Maybe that gives you a better result. So if you're struggling, try to change that around. So once we got a selection that we are happy with, we can go ahead and we can close this window and we will see that our selection here actually remains. So now we go back up here to image processing. We go back into star processing. And now we just click, not the gear icon, we just click full synthesis. Look here, you can see I have a spinning icon around my mouse, so it is working, but there is no progress bar down here as you're used to in Cyril. So don't worry if you don't see any progress bars. This is normal. This is the way that it works. I don't know why there isn't a progress bar, but just be patient. This can take a while, but it will finish eventually. Done. And if we zoom in now and look at the stars down here, you see, where before if we go back, stars were elongated and they're not very pretty. And now if we go forward, they are nice and round because they have been recalculated to the correct size. And similarly, these stars that were overexposed, we can take a look at those. You can see before, slightly elongated and actually overexposed there at the center. They have been fixed so that we are now not overexposing the center of the stars. We, it's probably more clear on like, oh, <laughs> let me just get that in there. On one of these like brighter stars like this one, for instance. And if we go back, See, clearly the star is overexposed in here in the middle. We are pretty much peeking it out. If we can find the actual overexposed pixel, I'm sure if we can. But this one is all sitting like very, very close to like 100% in all, all channels. And if we just go forward, we can see now it's not as overexposed. It's at least a lot prettier than it was before. And in general, it just creates a very, very pretty star mask. So we can go in now if we want to remove this and work with it further. We can go into star processing, click the gear icon, and then just click this delete all icon here. Boom. Removes all the stars. We can close this down. We don't need this anymore. So now we have our resynthesized star field here. And we could now do further like work on it. We could do like deconvolution if we wanted to try and reduce the star sizes and stuff like that. Maybe we wanted to stretch it slightly further. But for now, let's just say that we are happy with this star field that we have now, or happy with our star mask. So let's go ahead and let's save that. So now that we are happy with the way the stars look, 
we need to go and put these stars back into the original picture. Because remember, the original picture here still looks like this. No stars in it. Now, this needs a lot of work, obviously. What I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to apply a very quick stretch on this without doing too much. Okay, there we go. Very, very quick, rough uh, stretch here. I'm again, not going to do too much work with it right now. So when we need to put the stars back on this image, we're going to go back in here to star processing. And now we're going to jump into star recomposition. From in here, we now have two sides to this. We can go ahead and we can, for the first one, we're going to select our star list. That's how background. We have that here. And for the second one, we have our star mask and we can put that in. Now, normally what you can do is you can, um, you can stretch these in here as you can see. I often don't recommend doing like a full stretch from, uh, from linear to stretch data because you have, well, while we have some options here, you don't have the same like powerful tools as you have in a generalized hyperbolic stretch. So I would not recommend doing that. Now, one thing that I don't necessarily particularly like about this is the stars kind of look painted in. I don't know how to best describe it. Like you can see how they kind of look a little like, yeah, painted in. And I don't necessarily like the look that Cyril gives with the star recomposition, but this is the way you do it in Cyril. Um, in a minute here, I'm going to show you another way to do it that I think looks slightly better. And that also gives you some, some uh, control over, um, over the stars as you do it. But you could in here go and you could say, oh, if you want to stretch those up a little bit, you could do that if you want to make the stars slightly brighter or slightly weak, weaker, you have the option to go and control this now. Um, and then we could just click close. And now we have our new picture that we could save and we have put the stars back in and they're now all pretty and round all the way to the corner. There's still a bit of streaking there, I think, in the background from... Uh, from some noise that we haven't properly removed, but overall, it's a lot better than it was. So here's a method that I actually like a lot better. Right now, I am in GIMP, again, free tool that you can go and get, and I just imported the starless and the stretched star mask. So I've stretched both of them to a point where I feel like it's okay, and I've imported it. I put the star mask here on top of the starless, so that the, the nebulosity of the galaxy is the background, the star mask is on top. What we're going to do is we're going to jump up here to the mode where it's normally set normal and you can use screen i think sometimes works better i think this just looks more natural when you use the screen function in here than what it does when you do it in um, in Cyril. you can also use the i think it's multiply that some people like uh, no it's not multiply is it addition yeah you can use addition if you want to um personally I like screen. I think it gives a a slightly better, um, slightly better result. Now that we are in here, though, I said we could also do some work on the stars here, because as you can see, they are quite like bloated. They are quite big. Um, so what we can do in here is we can go up to the color tab and we can go to the curves tool here. And what you can do is just drag this down like this. And if you can see what happens here is if we drag down the lower end here and then pull the top up here around the middle so that this part here follows this faint blue line, the lower end here kind of, you can see this is what it was. By pulling this down, we can kind of reduce the size of the stars without actually touching how bright the center of the star is. So if we zoom really far in on the star here, we can see what we're doing by doing this kind of weird like weird S curve, as you can see here, that I'm essentially just, I'm not really touching the center of the star. The center of the star stays the same, but I'm just sharpening up those stars. And if you see, if you go too far, you begin to get banding and halo and weird effects around it. So make sure this part of the curve doesn't touch the button. Like you don't want to go that. Then you begin to see weird effects, but you can do something like that. And just to give you an idea of what the difference is here, is if we go and do a split view, can kind of go between you can see we went from this down to this much more subtle there's a lot of stars that almost disappeared so maybe we could go ahead and do a normal stretch of this afterwards to get a bit more light out of those faint stars at the center but overall you can sit you can play around with it so maybe i feel like i overdid that a little bit 
So maybe something like this is better. And you can see how we can just reduce the size of the star so that they feel less bloated. And this is one of the reasons why I really like the, to go and do my star composition inside um, inside GIMP. Now we have a have our image. We still have the layers separately. So if I wanted to try to see if I could pull out a little bit more color, maybe we could go and do that. We can play around with it at all. You get all those tools. Oh, that's way too much. Um, we get all those tools available. I don't think I can do much without beginning to get that blue thing in there because it's to look weird. Um, but we have all those color tools that we have available in GIMP, which is a lot better than I think when, when what we get in in Cyril. So I like to do all my final touch-ups over here. But with literally just like a few minutes of work, we've now managed to go from an image with like elongated stars that were out of back focus and the stars were bloomed up and a little bit too bloated to something that's actually passable. I mean, if we zoom in, we can even see that where the star mask is working, where you can see how the background is more noisy than the stars. So we could probably have to do some, some noise reduction on the background if we wanted to get that to look a little bit more natural. But overall, I think we've gotten a much better result than what we had before. First of all, we have the stretch factor. That's kind of working a bit like moving that midpoint as we did before. You can see it behaves in a similar fashion. You can see here that the red, green and blue peaks, they're not really aligned up, like at all. 